when am I reaccumulating silver? Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. Boy, I am so happy you chose to watch my video. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Anyway, do you feel it? Do you feel the turmoil, the tension over silver? You know, premiums are so high and, and spot continues to move sideways since it recovered from, you know, its recent lows. Maybe you're a new stacker. Someone just just woke to the fact that you know real money is elusive, fiat currency is a fraud, and silver is a great way to protect your financial future. So should you just start or continue to stack silver? I keep getting asked that on my live streams and in emails and DMs. Yankee, should should I stack silver now? People are afraid of missing out on a massive run-up of silver prices, right? Newbies are excited about stacking, and that's a good thing. I don't want to discourage someone who just began their journey uh, from stacking silver. <laughs> but the temptation is, is just to ignore crazy premiums, just buy it now, stack at any cost. In fact, somebody was peppering me in one of my live streams saying, Yo, Yankee, people need to keep buying silver eagles. What are you doing? And while I can totally understand the FOMO, I, I just have to disagree, okay? So, so hear me out. In this video, I'm going to quickly review my stance on silver purchasing, why I'm on a hold pattern right now, and tell you what conditions I'm evaluating before I resume my purchases of silver. So, quick review. Back on April 1st, I... Uh, caused a little stir when I dropped my I'm done video. It's probably, I think, one of the most viewed videos I've ever done. And yeah, it was April Fool's Day, I know, but it wasn't a joke, okay? Maybe a little a little misdirection there, right? A double fake. <laughs> I did stop my silver bullion purchases on that day. Um, full disclosure, I, I did buy the four 2020 uh, black flag coins that, that were released by Atmex recently. It's a flip play. That's it. Just four. I'm not going to buy any more. Whatever. I, I stopped largely buying silver on that date. I wasn't going to sell my silver. Some people got confused with that and said, do you want to sell some, some of your silver since you don't like it anymore, Yankee? No, no. Just because I wasn't buying any more silver, it didn't mean I didn't want it. Uh, but, you know, not everybody sees the wisdom of even that. We made what we know now to be a bad investment about 10 years ago on silver coins. Uh -huh. um, we thought it was a good idea at the time. Uh -huh. um, but we, th what the investment we made in those is worth about half of what of the money that we put into it at this time. Uh -huh. um, but we're not sure it's going to go back up. So my question is, should we go ahead and sell it now? What's this investment worth today? Um, between twelve and fourteen thousand. Okay, all right. If you had fourteen thousand dollars in cash sitting in the middle of your kitchen table, would you buy silver coins with it today? No. Then you wouldn't That's keep nice. it in silver coins for the exact same reason. Okay. Is that logical? Okay. <laughs> you know, I respect Dave Ramsey in a lot of ways, but he just doesn't seem to fully understand the perspective of wealth preservation with silver and gold. <laughs> he only sees it as a lousy investment. Anyway, April 1st was when I stopped any serious silver buying. I have a small hoard of silver bullion, but times are crazy right now. We've witnessed a medical crisis unlike anything we've ever seen. And that morphed into another financial crisis. Actually, the third such major global financial crisis I've seen in my lifetime. Now, industry shut down all across America. And that included mines, refineries, mints, precious metal wholesalers, local coin shops. You know what I'm talking about. But that national shutdown resulted in a deflationary phase. 
just like back in 2008. And it caused people to liquidate their precious metal ETFs and, and, and other uh, paper assets to cover expenses. At the same time, though, the insane inflationary response by the government and the Fed sparked a wave of precious metals panic buying. People knew what was going on. They wanted in on this stuff. So not only did we have a shortage of silver supply, we had a high demand for silver. And since silver is unfortunately seen as an industrial asset, not a monetary asset like it should be, silver spot price took a major hit. You know, at that same time I was watching this IGTV interview of uh, uh, Daniel Lacal, chief economist at Tresis. Check it out. Kind of what can we learn about the potential opportunities in either precious metal? I, I think that if you are bullish on gold, you have to be bullish on silver. But I think that if you're bullish on gold, you don't have to be bullish on silver because of the same things. Because uh, gold is helped by the fact that central banks ha are buying and buying a lot of it uh, for their reserves. Gold is helped as well by a very, very uh, tight supply demand scenario with mines shutting down, etc. Uh, in the case of silver, those aggressive uh, improvements in the in the in the bullish segment of the supply demand uh, scenario are not as radical as in gold. So this led me to put out that April 1st, I'm done with silver video, and to direct my focus towards gold exclusively. Gold has a more reasonable premium right now, and it has better availability. It's been kind of a challenge to get these uh, maple leaves since the uh, uh, Canadian Royal Mint is closed, but I'm able to get this stuff at a much lower premium than this stuff. So, you know, guys, this was a temporary move. And in hindsight, I think it was the right move to make. Gold quickly recovered while silver has largely languished during the same time frame. Now, I was always planning on getting back into silver at some point because I agree with Daniel LaCal in that I am still bullish on silver just not for the same reasons as I am for gold. Both gold and silver have strong decorrelation with other assets like, like equities and bonds, and both gold and silver should do very well in the future. But now let's talk about when. When am I getting back into silver? What am I looking for before I jump back in? Quick disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor. Please do your own research. Don't just buy or sell silver and gold because Yankee says so. So here's the short answer. I am out of buying silver until at least September. So why September? Well, I base it on uh, several things. One is the history of silver's seasonal price average. Silver just tends to do better after the summer doldrums. The other reason is the possibility of a second wave. And I'm not just talking about it from a medical standpoint, I'm talking about it from an economic standpoint. And finally, this is an election year, right? I want to see where the U.S. presidential election seems to be headed. Uh, it's going to factor in, I think, to the price of gold and silver. Now, that's the short answer, September. At least that's when I'm going to reevaluate purchasing again. The longer answer is that I am really waiting to see when we start to really emerge from this depressionary state we're in. I want to see the deflationary forces that are at work in our economy subside. See, the last time we had a financial crisis back in 08, it took about a year to move all the way around the globe and to reach its peak. I guess a case could be made that this could go all the way through 2021, but I don't think so. I see deflation leading to stagflation leading to hyperinflation. And we're in that first phase, folks, that deflationary phase. I do think stagflation is coming much quicker due to the unprecedented enormity of what the Fed and the government did in response to the crisis. And if we look at the last time those first two stages played out, 
It was back when I was a kid. It did take a while for stagflation to you know really kick in and for silver to explode. But the thing is, I don't think it's going to take anywhere near as long as it did back in the 70s. I think it's going to happen rather quickly. We're talking months rather than years in my estimation. But until this deflation gives way to stagflation, I think silver spot is going to stay low. I think premiums are going to stay high. And, well, unfortunately, I don't want to accumulate any more. So this fall, that's what I'm looking at. I think we're going to see some amazing turmoil in the fall. I think we're going to see political turmoil, uh, economic turmoil, maybe even medical turmoil. I, I am going to reassess my silver purchases in September and see if people might have to liquidate even more silver and gold paper assets to cover expenses. It's possible. I want to see if a second wave crushes industry again or not, which again would have an effect on silver. I also want to see if Donald Trump looks like he's going to get a second term or not. <laughs> Maybe the Trump administration and the Fed might be able to keep stagflation away until next year. Maybe. I doubt it. But regardless, I want to get in on more silver before what happened at the end of 1979. Thank you for watching my video. Really appreciate it. Please uh, leave a comment down there. Do you think September is a good time to reevaluate? Do you think that's too late? Do you think that's too early? What is your perspective on buying silver right now? And until next time, I hope your day is A-OK. -okay.